Kat Sloan here. So first, 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 I have to show you two quilts. They are made with my fabric line drawing room, which is the next fabric line that you will be able to get. It is coming in. It'll be shipping to stores, be in stores soon. Uh, and these two quilts have to go to the trade show with Benner Tex. So they will be at the Benner Tex booth. But before they're put in the box today to ship, I wanted to get, uh, get them on camera here so you could see them. This one is called, the, the kit is called High Tea. This is one that we will be sewing as a quilt along. Uh, it's a pattern from Sew Emma, the Fat Quarter Shops publications called Castle Court. And when they do the kits, they call it High Tea. I think it's a perfect name, High Tea in the Drawing Room. Isn't this gorgeous? Our ambassador Bobby helped me with the piecing on this one and the next one. This one is quilted by Judy Clark, my buddy in Pennsylvania. Uh, so let me show you close up quilting on it. I really, really love the quilting she did. So you can see here, it has like this fan and then they're intermixed. See, then there's another fan over here. Can you see those? they're just so cool and in this area around the stars those fans look so fantastic they almost look like they're spinning they give that movement all the way around it for each of the stars oh so here we go it's, this is a really fun easy quilt and we will have such a great time as a quilt along it is 75 by 75 and the kit uh, will be at the Fat Quarter Shop. You can, of course, just buy the pattern uh, if you've bought my fabric by that time and want to join in. Or if you're going to use other fabric, you can still join in. Uh, it, I, I welcome any and all fabric, but, you know, you might want to do draw leg room. This one will be really, really nice uh, to do because it is a good size, it is easy, all kinds of nice checkerboards to, to do in between the star blocks and they're really fun star blocks. Let me show you the other quilt and it is a design by my friend Wendy Shepard and it is the Owls. I imagine you may have seen her pattern with the Owls already. Uh, it's And here she did it in, she did the colors for me of a uh, drawing room with the black background. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So this pattern is also available right away. And then you can buy the fabric yourself. There's no kit for this one, but you can buy the fabric and do it when the fabric's in. The fabric's not quite in yet, but these are going to the trade show. So I wanted you to be able to see them ahead of time. This one is quilted by my local friend, Karen. And look at the, look at that quilting. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I think that this quilting really is cool because it shows up on the dark parts really well. And she used like a tan thread. So where is, there's like one lar larger, there, yeah, down here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, see where it's got like the spacers between the owls? The owls are so stinking cute. Look at them. You could do like a little uh, wall hanging of just four owls or, you know, nine owls, something like that, if you didn't want to do the big one. But this is so cool. We will do a quilt along for this guy as well uh, with the drawing room fabric, with my drawing room fabric. Like I said, the fabric is coming in to stores very soon. Uh, but, you know, I get some early stuff to make things, get things made for the trade show. So these will be going to the trade show in Houston that is just open to quilt shops and businesses and things like that. They won't, they won't be there for the festival portion, which is um, what you all would be going to if you're going to Houston. And that's the, the big show every year. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do a mail call have some a little accumulation but they're they're so cute I've got from um, ah, what's your first name Karen yeah Karen in uh, Massachusetts she sent me a Halloween card <laughs> she says she knew it was a little early but she saw the dog and had to send it I'm like this is so cute so today my my friend Karen is is stopping by and dropping a quilt off and I'm sending the dog back with her so she can to, to the spa to the Karen spa so that she can quilt it for me I'm so excited. Okay, this one is from uh, Harriet. Whee! So, so she sent me, look how cute this is. 
so darling. I don't know, cats are just, they, I've never had a cat, but I just think they're so pretty. My brother had a cat, so when, uh, uh, my, my youngest brother, so when I saw, you know, I saw a cat a lot, you know, his, but I just loved, loved Smokey. Now she also found, and she says, oh, I, she learned what cottage core meant, and she found these stickers. Look, so cute. I'm gonna have to put them, put them in the, in the calendar. Thank you for thinking of me, mushrooms, mushrooms. I need to, I need to get my mushroom. I need a mushroom quilt. So need it, so need it. What else do I have here? I have, I've got two more here from Tracy in Washington. She was out sh shopping and saw the pigs and decided I really needed some pig fabric. <laughs> this is so cute, so cute. Yes, yes, the pigs and <laughs> and last I have from Pat in Ohio. Look how pretty that is. Look at that. And then she sent some uh, <laughs> Halloween gnome, which is perfect for today because the gnomes are next. Uh, the gnomes and some, some flip flops. <laughs> but she also found some other things. Look how cute these are. Gumi earrings. The gummy bears. Whoops, one's up. Gummy bear earrings. Look at that. <gasps> and one more thing. She sent a beautiful scarf with, look at the bees. Oh, I love the, love this color. Love it. Love it. Love it. I can't put it on because I got the mic right now. So, but I will wear it in the future. Okay. <sighs> Cute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got the rest of today. We have the gnomes and then more on matchstick quilting. So let's do the gnomes first. So the gnomes went to visit Aunt Nadine in Maine. She was going to Lake Placid, New York uh, for adult skating camp. And she decided the gnomes would be, be great for the gnomes to go along. She wrote me a long time ago she's, and, and said, you know, what do you think? I'm like, that would be awesome. Awesome to wrap up their tour with the skating, skating classes. And so she decided they also needed to have just a little bling before they went. Can you see? Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> so she blinged out everybody. Yes, everybody. Norm, Norm has like down on his belt, you know, because they're going to be ice skating, they have to look good. And then baby Bob, Nanette, and the kitty all got blinged. <laughs> when the box came back, Nadine, I started laughing. I opened them up and started seeing all the bling. And I was like, this is the best. So let's see what adventures they had with Aunt Nadine. While riding in the car, Baby Bob and Little Lucy asked approximately 3,542 times if they were there yet. <laughs> and after checking in at the Airbnb, Norman and Annette enjoyed some wine and cheese on the deck along with a view of Mirror Lake. So the next day, the gnomes arrived over at the Lake Placid Olympic Village. Oh my goodness, how exciting is that? They toured the campus, they saw the huge Olympic rings, and then the view from the deck is just spectacular. Across the street is the speed skating oval that is used for training in the winter, uh, and the Anirondack Mountains are in the distance. They're behind the flags of the nation. Inside, there was a little hockey going on, so they had to stop and partake of some hockey and watch what was happening. Then they spotted the bobsled. Oh my goodness, baby Bob and little Lucy were just begging their parents to let them try out for the team. Can you imagine a gnome bobsled team? I think it should happen. I do. Uh, so then the, they went over and found a curling match and they were asked to join in. So they were helping, they were you know, doing the curling match and Nanette scored the tie breaking point for the team. Very, very exciting. <laughs> Everybody enjoyed their time at the ice skating rink. Look at them here. Uh, the skaters who were there to take classes and the instructors who were teaching were all such great sports to take the gnomes out on the ice, show them the moves, all these beautiful skating moves. Uh, and you know, this is uh, at Lake Placid. They do adult skates where there's lessons. You can get group lessons, private lessons, and Nadine and her husband go up there and take those lessons. Uh, look, look, there's the kitty out. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Oh, look, right, right, look, watch, watch. Oh, gorgeous ending. Now, this is Mark Fenzak. He is a three-time U.S. National Ice Dance competitor, five-time world figure silver medalist. And he has baby Bob, and he is showing him how to do a tulip on one foot. So there's a little fast action footwork. Now, spinning around, look, oh, how sweet. Now, I don't think the gnomes got sick with any of that either. They did pretty good. There's all kinds of different things going on. Here's Nadine and her husband doing a tango, a tango dance. Uh, they just have to imagine the music, right? And look at the stadium. You can see, can you imagine it filled with people? Okay, now we have Paul Wiley. He's a 1992 Olympic silver medalist. Our gnomes have been skating with an Olympic silver medalist. Nadine says he loves teaching the skaters. He is helping them in showing them here a scratch spin and a forward pivot. And he's going to end his routine with an outside spread eagle and an inside spread eagle and twizzles. Woohoo, that is showmanship. Look at this. What an, what an experience. Oh, gorgeous. He does, oh, just exciting. Okay, we're going to end here with Bridget, who is 78, and she is showing little Lucy and Felicia the cat how to do an elegant lunge. There they go. So here are the baby gnomes, baby Bob and little Lucy with some ice skates. Oh my goodness, they were in heaven thinking, you know, maybe Nadine, we're going to let them keep these, but I don't think so. <laughs> After a long drive back to Maine, the gnome family was ready for some rest and relaxation on the front porch. Norm had a nice cold beer, and Felicia, the feline, found a new friend. you got to have new friends, right? Nanette continued to work on her cross-stitch cherry tree from the Suzyaki's Summer Memories book. Don't they look like they're having a good time? I think so. Nadine uh, wanted to show um, Nanette, because, you know, Nanette's really interested in the long arms, and Nadine is a beautiful long armer, so she had her red zinger on there, and look at that. They're just checking out the stitches that she's doing. And then on their last day, they are in Maine. So their last day with Aunt Nadine, Baby Bob and Little Lucy got close up to a large lobster with big claws. <laughs> Now over here you can see that the family is enjoying some awesome uh, relaxation time in Nadine's home. Uh, she is a fabulous baker and she made them a blackberry pie and they're having a little espresso to close out the trip. Thank you Nadine and your wonderful friends at the ice rinks to really show our little gnome family a great time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nadine, for showing the gnomes such a wonderful time, baking them wonderful things, taking them ice skating. Their parents thank you for not letting them sign up for the, um, the bobsled tea. <laughs> I love that. I love that that was there. Ah. <sighs> So the gnomes are now home. They have no more adventures. Uh, they've been gone for on around this world tour for a year and like three months. Uh, so it's quite a long tour. In, in a few weeks, I'm going to sort of get the gnomes and all their fun stuff to gather it up and sort of chat a little bit about uh, what they did. Just do tiny, a tiny little recap sometime in October. So that'll be kind of the wrap up for the gnomes. Now I have the matchstick. I've been working on it and I, went, I did some films, in, two films to sort of walk you through where I'm going with this. So I want to show you to that. I want to show you that. So all of the channel quilting is done from one side to the other. And what I did was start top to bottom, top to bottom on this side. And then I rotated it and did top to bottom for that half. So that I was, you know, not rotating it every one or anything like that because that's where you'll get puckers in here. But I was rotating just on the center point so that I don't have so much to put in the well of the quilt or the harp of the quilt as they call it. So now you could leave it like this. You could just have this as your channel quilting. But I'm going to go back through. My ultimate will be to have it all like this. And I did another little section. Where am I looking? Yeah, here I did a little section of it here. And so now what I'm going to do is go in halves. You know, everything across. Which, um, you know, it's just a couple of more uh, rows or columns rather. But then after that I have to half each of those. And that's like double or triple or I don't know what. I haven't done the math. But it'll be a lot more to do the last part. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start and see, see how much I do. So let's take a look at this. I've got the matchstick on this side and the channel on that side. So if I turn this way, I think you can easily see, you can see how on the channel, you, you pretty much you can see the fabric in between the channels. Uh, there's a little bit of texture there and you can definitely see those lines. The matchstick is kind of interesting because it, it kind of disappears and I read somebody else said that, you know, it sort of disappears away into the background but it's also extremely flat. Very, very flat. It's that super, super cool look. So when I was, so I've got half, well, a little bit more, a little bit more than half. And what, I, what I'll do now, I'm going to do the whole thing, is I have to come in the middle of each channel and then on either side. So there's actually three lines that will be in each one of these channels. And there's like 20 of channels here. And I figured out it takes about um, two minutes right now to do a channel. You know, of this size, I don't have any bulks to deal with. It's a small piece. I can get from end to end three times. You have to do it three, three, three times in each channel. It takes two minutes. So that's like 40 minutes to do this piece if I don't, um, you know, take a lot of breaks because it, it can be a little bit boring and you might, your foot might get a little bit cramped, you know, if you're, you know, constantly, because you're constantly on the speed with your foot. And I found that the foot was a thing that was really started to um, uh, fatigue a little bit if I didn't take breaks because you're not letting up. You're just going go, go, go. So you constantly have your foot down. Of course, you could do automatic um, on your machine too. You could let it run without hitting the foot pedal. Uh, so that would be an option. So it'd probably be a good option for this one. So that means if this is 40 uh, minutes to do that, then the whole thing, will, and this is up to uh, 50 minutes. Okay, so that'd be 50 minutes to do one half, 50 minutes to do the other half. So let's say two hours to do to do this unit, um, the whole quilt. But then there's some breaks and things like that. And I'm not doing it two hours straight because that's that's a little bit too much. I did it, I think I quilted this in two different or three different segments, three different segments. So and then I thought, well, if that takes two hours, you know, what if I want to do a bigger quilt? Like this is the size of one quadrant. Then there would be another one, another one, another one to make that size. That would be two, four, six, eight, you know, like about eight hours. And, um, but it would take longer because it's more length. So it's going to be more bulky. You're going to have a little bit more maneuvering, stopping and maneuvering the sandwich, the quilt sandwich as you go. When you have a bigger quilt, this side is super easy. You don't have any of that to deal with. So, you know, eight to 10 hours for a lap quilt, I would say probably 10 to 12 hours because you're going to have more breaks. Uh, so that's interesting because I would like to do a lap size. I would like to do one with this matchstick just to experience it. It's still flexible and it's going to be even more flexible when you use it, you know, as you use it. But all that thread does um, firm up. You know, it feels a little bit like a placemat right now. And for a wall hanging, this is excellent. It's super flat. Just such, such a cool look. So I hope you, I'll show you. I'll show you, of course, when it's done. I've got to do the other half. Uh, but I'm going to get it done soon because I'm enjoying it so much. So here we go. I've got, um, I, I did not, I, from that last video, I did not sew any of this because I was having to put binding on quilts and do some other projects. And so uh, I didn't get back to this yet. But that is what I'm going to do through this weekend is I'm going to finish this up with the matchstick quilting. And I thought, you know, I told you I was going to do a um, challenge. So what I'm going to challenge you to do for this month, this is this month's Pat's challenge, which is not tidy up. This is to do something like we did labels last month. You kind of organize them this month, cut a six and a half inch square. That's all. That's all you need. Six and a half inch square. Cut a backing. If you want to just cut them together, the same thing and try out the channel quilting. Here is a mug rug. So you can make this into a mug rug. You could use a block or something else. But if you don't want to make anything, this is a mug rug that my friend Anne made for me quite a few years ago. And she did the channel quilting. So you can see that that's the wider. Well, if you want to do then the matchstick, split it and then split either side again, like I've been showing you and t and test that out. So this is my challenge to you. I will sew this up and I will do a little video with it for, 
Friday. Um, if not, it'll be on Monday. So it just depends on how it fits in. And I will show you the little mug rug done up, taking it from the next level from what Ann did on channeling for the one she gave me to the matchstick, which is the much tighter that you're seeing here. So like this. Plus, I'm going to finish this guy and have binding on it. That that probably won't be for um, Friday. That'll be for Monday or Tuesday next week. I will have that guy finished. So that's the challenge. So I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, the first glimpse of drawing room made up into some quilts. Uh, and you can get uh, a pre-order for this one. For, so when the kit comes in, you'll get notified uh, for the um, high tea. So, okay, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone and the gnomes. Where are they? The gnomes. There's baby Lucy. She'll see you online. Bye-bye. <laughs>